just east of Woodland, Georgia, is where the old town of Pleasant Hill used to reside. And it is here that one of the most bizarre stories of a werewolf took place. No one was killed, but a large number of animals had their throats ripped out. There are still sightings to this day on Highway 36, just outside of town. But the debate, check this out, is whether it's a werewolf, the ghost of a werewolf, or Bigfoot. And yeah, the story's gonna get that crazy. Plus, the cemetery there has a grave that you can take a picture of that may reveal a werewolf in the background. In this episode, we'll hook you up with where to go to investigate for this werewolf or its ghost here on The Adventure Guide. So in an account submitted by a subscriber from Columbus, Georgia, he claims that he was returning late from a fishing trip one night on the Flint River. As he was driving back late at night, he saw something covered with hair cross Highway 36 that was very bear-like, but it was too agile and fast on two legs to be a bear, plus it was way too lean. He came to a stop and searched the nearby woods with a spotlight when something walloped his truck, and he sped away. He assumed it was a Bigfoot, but as he began to look for other sightings reported in the area, he came across this piece of history from the 1800s. And this is what he submitted. On the south side of Pleasant Hill lived Joel and Mildred Burt. In 1841, Mildred gave birth to Emily Isabella Burt. Just four years later, little Emily had a sister, Mildred. But before Emily could turn seven, her father passed away. In 1849, Emily and her sister were sent away to boarding school. Their mother took care of some of her in-laws' children while her girls were away in school. Emily and Mildred returned in the 1850s. However, something wasn't right with Emily. Emily had symptoms of PTSD, the inability to sleep, the million-yard stare, etc. It is unknown why, but around this time, numerous members of the community were waking up to find their livestock and chickens being killed. Generally, they were just drained of their blood and their throats were ripped out. They weren't being eaten, just mutilated. Eventually, the community grew tired of this and they formed a hunting party to kill the beast that was destroying their food source. They never had any luck. The beast was very random about appearing. The townsfolk gave up and began to seek help from outside of their community. They ventured out to get the advice from Old Man Hetch, who lived about 35 miles away near the Chattahoochee River, and claimed to know how to deal with the situation. Some sources claim that he was dabbling in the dark arts, but according to this guy, he found no credible sources of him doing so, or even of his existence. He supposedly told them they were dealing with a werewolf, and that they had to go out and buy silver crucifixes, melt them in with lead, to form holy mini-balls. He also told them not to waste their time hunting for it on nights without a full moon. An ample number bought the story of the werewolf and began to piece the puzzle together. Mrs. Burt's daughter, Emily, had been acting in a weird manner, leaving the house in the middle of the night, and most importantly, all these killings didn't start till she came back from school. So a band of men loaded their firearms with these silver-laced miniballs, and they waited near the Burt land on the next full moon. Supposedly, they heard outlandish noises and then spotted a silhouette in the distance. One source said they saw a bipedal figure with a snout, and once they saw the ears twitch on top of its head, they opened fire. The figure darted away. Mrs. Mildred Burt heard the gunshots. She quickly lit a lamp and made her way towards the hollering of the excited men. As she ran, there was Emily laying on the ground with a non-life-threatening wound. Mildred helped her up and back to the house and patched her up. The men never came to the house. They just disbanded and went home. One account states that Emily never had another episode after this. Another account says that it was never her. Yet another account claims she suffered from a mental illness but received treatment for it. One other account states that she was healed from the bullet striking her. And one states that she was spiritually cleansed from turning into a werewolf. Emily died in 1911 of natural causes. One source of the story said, quote, Some residents of Talbot County objected to her being buried in the consecrated ground in the Owens and Holmes Cemetery. But according to the person who submitted this story to me, Emily is buried there and he has seen her grave with his own eyes. After encountering the beast or the ghost of the beast on Highway 36, he began to venture the area and found her grave. In fact, others he's talked to claim that the couple of times that they've gone out and shot pictures of the grave, they've seen werewolf-looking type things in the background. 
Unfortunately, neither him nor I can get our hands on these pictures. Emily's obituary never mentioned her being a werewolf, just that she was a very devout Christian woman who tended to the needy in her community. It turns out others have witnessed the same thing covered in hair. The location of the sightings leads many to believe it is a werewolf and others actually believe it's Emily's ghost in werewolf form because her grave is one mile south of these sightings. Alright guys, I'm going to post coordinates to what I think is the graveyard in the comments below. If you happen to have an encounter or plan to go out there, be sure to share with us your experiences in the comments below. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and until next time, we're off on another adventure. God bless.